Hello everyone and welcome to the sewing report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. It has been so long since I've done a live stream and I have recently purchased some new embroidery designs and I get a lot of questions about the software and about uh, how to import your designs into the machine. So I thought I would do a live stream to really walk you through what I do when I purchase designs and fonts how to get them into the embroidery software and then how I get them on my embroidery machine. So if that's something you're up for, come join the fun. I'm gonna, we'll chill for a few minutes to see who pops on here. Also, let me know, you know, where, where are you watching from and are you into machine embroidery? So the software we're going to be using is called Embrilliance Essentials. This is the software I've been using. I really like it and I think it's pretty easy to use. Also, quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, none of the companies or brands I'm talking about, you know, I don't have any business relationship with them. I paid for everything I'm talking about. Um, also, I get a lot of questions of people trying to help me troubleshoot their machines. And if that's something you have a question about, I cannot help you with that. So check the description box because I do link you guys to the brother support website. I have the Brother PE800 embroider machine and I'm going to bring that up real quick because it's the machine I use and you know I am a big fan of it. All right so here we go. So this is the machine I have and I've been using. It's called the Brother PE800. It is a single needle machine so that means you can only do one thread color at a time and then you have to switch them out. I've had this machine for about three years and I've used it a lot. Uh, I'm more of a hobbyist also, so just an, just another thing to be aware of. I'm not a uh, machine expert and I'm not really a software expert. I'm just someone who uses it and I'm just trying to show you uh, what, I, what I've done, what I've had success with, what I've had failures with, because I know it can be a little bit confusing when you're getting into embroider machines they're different than sewing machines, and I also get a lot of common questions. Also, feel free to drop me any questions you have. I, I may be able to answer them. I may not be able to answer them. I, I, you know, I'm not really sure. All right, welcome everybody. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so I see. All right, I'm, we're getting some cool comments here. So thank you guys for watching. I know it's been uh, forever. I do have a video planned for next week, but I'm going out of town this weekend so i thought hey you know what this is a perfect time to jump on live and just chat with you guys let's have some fun i've got some iced coffee i know it's like five it's about six o'clock in the evening my husband left for work so let's just have a good time chill hang out and yeah if you have questions about embroider machines or the software uh drop you're welcome to drop them here again some i get a lot of questions that i can't answer so if I can't, I will certainly let you know. Um, and I also get a lot of questions about digitizing. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, this video is not going to be about digitizing your designs. This video is going to be about using designs you purchase and fonts you purchase. I'm not really a designer. And I know that's something a lot of people who are getting into embroidery are interested in. But it's just not my wheelhouse. I am not real adept with Adobe Illustrator or like Inkstitch or Inkscape. I know that those are pretty popular for uh, beginners. And the other thing is that um, just from what I'm hearing from people who are in the embroidery industry is that digitizing has a pretty steep learning curve. So if you're here and you're like just trying to learn about stuff, I would recommend you check out some. There are some forums like on Reddit, there's a machine embroidery and people talk about digitizing and I'm gonna be honest it looks pretty challenging at least for me because I'm not so if you're a graphic designer I don't know maybe it would be a little bit easier for you but you're like it's not like you can just plug in an image and then stitch it out that's not how it works so that's a question I get a lot is can I use like a JPEG or PNG or something I designed in Illustrator and turn that into embroidery an embroidery file and the answer is not really. It has to specifically be a uh, an embroidery an embroidery file. So that is a file that's been designed to to make stitches. 
So it's a lot different than a, like a photo or some sort of graphic design. And there are some programs that do auto digitizing, but from what I understand, they're really crappy. So even if you can get it to that point, you have to tweak a bunch of stuff to get it to stitch out correctly. So that's something I've been kind of learning about, uh, but I'm probably not the probably not the person to ask about digitizing. I did reach out to somebody this week who seems to be pretty expert level with digitizing and they actually do work for Embrilliance. So I did reach out via email to see if they wanted to come on the channel. I have not heard back. Uh, so if I do, though, I would love to have this person on to to really kind of share their knowledge because they do seem to be a lot more of an expert with digitizing uh, than myself. OK, we got a few comments. Let's pop a few of those up. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and that's the thing. I use the embroidery machine. I don't have an embroidery business or anything like that. I just make small projects for myself. And I don't, you know, I'm not like running 180 shirts a day or anything like that. So if you are interested in embroidery machines from a business standpoint, um, after having the Brother PEA 100, I actually would not recommend it for business purposes. Unless maybe you're doing like one item every week or, you know, like if you're doing that on a very small scale, like maybe embroidery is not like the bulk of your business, but you want to offer some custom stuff. I think it would probably be OK. But if you're trying to have an embroidery business, uh, you really need to look at those commercial machines like the multi needle machines or they even have multi head machines. And I would look into those. They're super expensive. So it is a very significant investment to get one of those machines. But after having a single needle machine for a while, I don't really see it as being feasible for an embroidery specific uh, business. Okay, so we're getting a lot of good questions already. I know these have been, I did a, a video a couple of years ago just on Embrilliance Essentials or Embrilliance uh, Express the free version. And it got like over 100,000 views. So I didn't realize there was an immense amount of interest in the software, but apparently, uh, there is. OK, so this is a good question. How do I share a file um, from Embrilliance? I'm having trouble sharing, uploading. So are you trying are you just talking about like transferring the file between like computers or something? Um, you can save you can save the files. Um, the good thing about Embrilliance is that you can save the files to different uh, formats. So every manufacturer has its own uh, file format like for the brother it's dot pes so what i'm gonna do in this live stream is walk you through what i do from purchasing a design and a font to getting it into the software and then how i get it uh to the embroidery machine so hopefully this is a lot of fun we will see all right cool 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 yeah there is yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot to learn. Um, so thank you guys for joining me. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in sewing and crafts, you're welcome to join me here at the sewing report. Uh, we do videos and I have I really try to switch up which machines I'm using. So in the last video, I you know, was doing a simple sewing project on the brother CS 7000i. I also have this embroider machine. I have a serger. So I really try to switch up the projects to use different machines. I recently got a Juki industrial machine. That's been a lot of fun. And the next video out is going to be about the Juki because believe it or not, I figured out how to put a walking foot on the thing and I'm going to be going into that. All right. RMF asks, what is the thickest material that you've embroidered? That is a an Ikea cotton bath mat. It was very, uh, very lofty. And I managed to do that. Um, I've gotten a lot of, you know, and I'm trying to do different projects on different types of materials. I have not done a lot of like real thin materials. Like I thought about trying to do a bathrobe. That's like a, like a, one of those silky robes. I think I'm going to do that in the future. Um, and I'm hoping with what, with what I'm going to be doing in this episode, I hope to do some bat some beach towels because I think that would be a fun uh, summer summer program. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to bring up. Oh, I got to share my screen. I've not done that. All right. Hold on a second. OK, so. All right. So I've got in brilliance up here. So this is the software I did. Uh, I did upgrade to the paid version a while ago for 
like about a year and a half I was using the free version. It's pretty user friendly. It is the free version, though, is really limited. And um, there's some helpful links below to uh, in brilliance. And it's I mean, it's a great so far. It's a great software. I know there are so many different types of software. And in full disclosure, I haven't tried Inkscape or Ink Stitch. Those are the free ones. They seem kind of hit or miss. I, I think the good one is the Wilcom Hatch software, but that one is like over a thousand dollars. And I think if you're if you're digitizing things, you're if you're gonna get into digitizing and designing, it might be worth a shot. Uh, but for me, just using other designs and fonts that I purchase. I just didn't really see it being worth the cost. And I also obviously don't have an embroidery business. So that's probably not going to be something that I'm doing here. But again, that's why I'm really trying to get somebody on here who's a digitizer. Um, I've also gotten some. If you go on Etsy and you search for embroidery digitizing service, a lot of people will digitize your design. So if you're a graphic designer or if you just want your business logo or something like that, there's a lot of people who will digitize it for you and they only charge like 10 to 20 dollars the one thing to watch out for with that though is that the quality of the digitizing is all over the map so you i don't know it's it can be really hard and i've tried out a few different etsy shops uh, just purchasing designs and some stitch out better than others so i mean the good thing is they don't cost that much money so you're not out you know a ton if it doesn't work out but you do need to be careful because, again, any here's the thing. Anyone can sell their embroidery designs. That doesn't mean that they're going to be any good. And from what I'm learning, the digitizing isn't just about getting the design digitized, but also how well it stitches out on different materials. There, there's stuff like you can comp. There's like comp pull compensation because when you're stitching out the design, it, it kind of manipulates your fabric or your material. So there's a lot to get into. Also, how dense the stitches are. And the design may stitch out well on one material, but really horrible on another material. And there's a lot of different factors. There's so many different aspects involved in the embroidery process itself that it can be very daunting. It also depends on what kind of stabilizer you're using. Again, the material, all kinds of stuff. So it can be really... Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's just a ton of, I'll just say this, there's a lot of trial and error. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Okay. So I'm going to bring up some stuff. All right. I'm going to bring up this Etsy shop. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. So recently I purchased some stuff. Okay. So I found this shop. I cannot really attest to the design quality yet because I have not stitched out the designs I purchased, but they had, it's called Planet Applique. I'm not really endorsing it, but it is linked below. And I purchased, they had some really cute stuff. So like they have, so they have some applique like monograms and then you can get matching fonts that also match that theme. So let me kind of show you what I mean. Okay, so I purchased this Sand Pale 3 applique alphabet so this particular one comes with like this applic big applique letter and then the sand pail bucket and then this font like to the side of it is a separate font so if you purchase the two together you can combine them and then you can you know make your make a name so this is what it so this is what it comes with so I purchased this and then I also purchased, let me see if I can find the, okay, so, and then this is the coordinating font. So I know that could be a little bit confusing. So these two things are separate, but then you see that the font has these really cute beach themed images along with the letters. So I thought that seemed really cool, right? So I've purchased, all right, all right hold on a second. So I purchased the Surfside Monogram font the Sand Pale 3 applique. And then they also had this other alphabet that just looked cute. It was an applique um, monogram font. And we're going to go over the file types as well. So there is, there you can, you can download each letter separately using your embroidery machine file type. 
but these also come with uh, a .bx files. So that basically turns each element into a type set. So instead of importing each element separately, you can just type it out and it will translate it into the, uh, the word. So that's cool. I think these would be really cute for kids stuff. So that's why I'm pretty jazzed about it. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I do to uh, download the files, um, bring them into the program. Okay, so once once you purchase the elements um, on Etsy, at least you can you know there's a little thing that says download files. Now these are zipped files, so that means they're compressed. So from there, you're also going to have to unzip uh, the folders. I do really wish Etsy had a thing where you could download all the files at once. So you have to go through each one and do it individually. Okay, so let's click download and I've created a, um, I've created a test folder. Okay, so let me find this. Okay, hold on a second. Where did you go? Okay. Okay, so I've created a little folder where I can put all of my files in here. Okay, so all right, so one by one, I'm just going to go through and save each file, right? All right, so this is not too bad. Okay. All right, so we're just going to do each one. Again, I, I do wish they had like a download all files because then you would only have to do this once, but it is what it is. Okay. So now we're going to get the... Sand Pell applique here. All right, one more. Okay. So I've got all of those downloaded now. All right, so here is my file folder. All right, I'm gonna all right, show you this. So you can save them on your, you know, anywhere on your computer. Now, if you see there's a little zipper image here, that means that the file is compressed. So in order to use the file, you need to unzip the file. So, and and also uh, I'm using a Windows computer. I'm sure there's equivalent stuff for Macs. I don't have a Mac, so I don't know. So you're gonna right click on each folder and then you see it says extract all, that's going to unzip. Actually, I wonder if I can do all of them at once. All right, let me see. All right, so I'm gonna select all of them. Here we go, extract all. Okay, that makes it easier. All right, so now I'm going to extract all of these files and it should be pretty quick here. Do, 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 all right. And it's very common. It's going to be a little overwhelming when you see all the files because there's going to be so many of them. Okay, so. All right, where are all these things going? All right, here we go. All right, so. All right, so when you click in to each folder, you can see there's another folder. And now when you get into here, you can start to see what you're working with. So these are all different file types. Um, and also usually the files will come with uh, some like boilerplate instructions, you know, copyright policies. So this is the one from Planet Applique. So you can see it says all of Planet Applique designs are delivered digitally and here's all the file types. And also include images showing size info. Um, okay, also they have a link. Okay, they have a, a YouTube channel. Okay, they kind of have some instructions. You know, this is actually pretty cool. So you can see what you have to do for all of the applique designs. So that's pretty Okay, so in here, actually, this is cool. So they have a, an instructions for the BX format. So that's actually what we're going to be doing. 
So these can be helpful in often the files also come with images so you can see what all of them look like. Okay, yeah. And typically there is uh, some copyright policies like some designers allow you to sell finished items with their designs as long as it's a physical item. But usually you're not supposed to be sharing these files with other people or selling these files in any way, shape or form. Uh, just because this is their intellectual property. So that's their instructions. Okay, yeah. And, you know, you can read them. You can not read them. Okay, so this is the part one. So the reason they did it in two parts is because probably the files are so large. Okay, so here's part two. All right. So you can see, okay, images. Okay, so you'll be able to see what all of these look like. Okay, so these are some images showing you what all of them look like. Okay, that's cool. Now, all right, so, and you can see all of the different file formats. So you're gonna have to look up what the file type is for your particular manufacturer. They all have their own. So PES is the brother ones. So you can see all of these files here. And again, there's so many because there's obviously a ton of different uh, sizes and each element. So each element comes in a number of different sizes. So the good thing about Imbrilliance Essentials is that you can kind of drag and drop. So I'm gonna, let's just say I wanted this letter Q. This is, uh, let's do two inches. You can actually, you should be able to, or maybe not, okay. Typically, you can drag and drop. Okay, or maybe not. I wonder if this isn't, I wonder if this is still compressed. Okay. This might be... Okay. Oh, you know what? When I extracted all, it didn't do... Okay. It didn't do all of them. It only did one. Okay, so apparently you can't do... Um, I guess you can't do all of them at once. You have to do each one separately. All right, so let's... Let's work on that. Okay, here we go. So that's why I wasn't able to drag and drop. So I'm gonna have to, all right. All right, so update, I guess you can't do all of them at once. You have to do all of them separately. Ugh, fun times, okay. So I'm going to extract all of these guys. All right, here we go. All right, let's go here. Okay, so you can see when you unzip it, it's creating new folders. So these are the folders you're going to be working out of. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if, uh... Ah, okay, this can be fun, right? All right, so I need to unzip this one or extract all. Okay. I know this might seem a little bit tedious, uh, but I just really wanted to make sure this was complete and really trying to explain all of them because I know this might seem really easy for you. For some people, it's not. All right, so we're going to extract all. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, cool. So I think we're almost there. Ah. All right. So I got one, two, three, one, two. Okay. So I think I'm good. Okay. We're just going to wait for this to be done. <clears throat> all right. So now I've got all of my got Jared out, applique alphabet part one, two, three. Sandpel Alphabet Part 1 and 2, and Surfside Embroidery Font Part 1 and 2. So I'm going to show you the difference between uh, importing things into Embrilliance using your machine format and also using the BX format. So I'm using the Brother, right? So my... There we go. All right, let's go back. Okay, so Part 2 must be where... Okay. The PS files are. Okay, so here is the PS files for this Sandpel alphabet. So you can see they have, 
I do wish this was with how many inches tall it was. It's just it's just showing you each element for the hoop size. All right, so let's do J since I'm Jen. Um, all right, so now I should be able to drag and okay, so I should be able to drag and drop. And also, now that you've downloaded everything, if you want to get rid of the compressed files, you can. You don't have to. Um, but you can if you want to. All right, so I'm just going to delete these guys. I don't really need them since I have all of the files uncompressed now or unzipped or extracted. Okay, so let's get into the PES file. And again, these are all of like the SEW VIP. These are all just the file types. So these are what's compatible with uh, your machine. Okay, so... All right, so this is the PES file. So this is what I need to work for because I'm using uh, the brother. All right, so I'm going to go to the, like, say I want the letter J, right? Um, so they have, th you can see they have three sizes. They've got four. This is for the four by four inch hoop. This is for the five by seven inch hoop. And this is for the six by 10 inch hoop. On um, the brother, the biggest hoop size you can really do is five by seven. I'm going to do the four by four hoop just because, you know, I maybe want it smaller. All right, so you can see letter J here. And this is if you just import all of the elements um, on their own. The other cool thing about the uh, Embrillion software is you can, I let's see here. So I believe I should be able to, hold on a second. Okay, so you can use these arrows to like rotate them. So if I wanted to, obviously because like if I was doing a, a word, like a name, I would probably want to do it horizontal, like landscape view, not portrait. Then I would need to have the design going up and down like this. I kind of feel like I should be able to, oh wait, never mind. I feel like there's got to be a way to maybe change the view of this. Let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, view. I feel like there's gotta be a way where I can, and again, I'm kind of walking through this with you, so you're doing it with me here. But I feel like there's gotta be a way to, to view this and maybe like, turn, maybe flip this around, but I don't know, if, if not, that's okay. So when you've got this selected, you can use your up down keys to move this around like this. Okay, there we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be trying to import, all right. We're gonna try to import the font version of this. All right, so let's go back here and we're gonna get, we're gonna go to the Surfside embroidery font. So that's the corresponding font that goes with the applique. So if so, there's a couple ways you could do it. If I wanted to, I could just go into my dot pe the pes stuff, and I could import each one individually. All right. So let me just get rid of this font here. Okay, there we go. All right. So if I wanted to. So say I was trying to make the word Jen, I could, so I'm going to try the two inch E. Okay. There we go. All right. And obviously I'm going to need to flip this cause, all right. Yeah, although this seems a little bit small to be honest with you. All right. So let's get rid of this. Let's make it a little bigger. Oops. Okay. Here we go. All right. So let's do the three inch. So I can drag and I can drag and drop each letter. Okay, the three inch makes more sense. So I could do the E and the N this way. All right, and let's do the N three inch. Okay, so now what I would do is, all right, here we go. Do this with the E. And then I would just have to put all of these elements. I would just have to arrange them myself. Okay, so I'm going to move the J over here. There you go. Let's do the E. And uh, over here in the object, so this is how you keep track of what you've got going on. 
you can minimize or maximize each of the steps for the stitch out. All right, so when I've got the E, so I could move this this way and then move the N a little bit. I also believe you can, let's see if I can, I thought there was a way to kind of space them out even. Okay, so here we go, align. All right, so you can kind of align them. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so we're going to align them. All right, let's just try some stuff out. So, oh, distribute, okay. So spacing, I don't know. This is the first time I'm seeing this. So again, I'm kind of, you're just doing this along. This is the first time I've seen this. All right, so let's see if we want to do, yeah, I don't know, spacing. All right, let's try that. All right, let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, so this actually seemed to work. So it's spaced, so it that, doing that evenly spaced out the elements. I actually think that looks okay. And when you select all of them, all right, let's see what happens when I center designs in the hoop. Okay, so this centered it in the hoop and it's evenly spaced, so that's cool. All right, so say I wanted to stitch this out. What you do from here is you just have to save. So I've got this all saved. This is also, um, I believe you can also change what hoop size you're working with. So let's see here. You should be able to, let's see if we can figure out how to change the, okay, hoop. Let's see here. Yeah, I know there's a way to change the hoops size so that you can, oh wait, here we go. So inches, let's see here. Yeah, you can change that. Let's see what's going on here. All right, so let's do, so this is a five, all right, so five by seven, okay. Yeah, there's a lot you can do with this. Okay, so draw a hoop. Utility. Yeah, there's this software has a lot of different elements, and I'm learning this too. So I thought this might be helpful since, again, you can learn along with me as I try to figure out this software, right? So if you wanted to save this file, you can also, so you can save your stitch file, you can save the working file, which is this program. You can also save both. So if you want to save stitch and working, um, all right, let me just save this as the test. Let me go into my little test file here. All right, hold on a sec. All right, so we're gonna save this all in this folder and I'm gonna call this uh, Gen Beach font and then I'll do PS since we're not using the BX files here. All right, so I'm just going to do this. All right, here we go. And then this would save both my Embrilliance file and it would also save the, the PES file so that I can bring it over to the embroider machine. And with this particular font, the J here in the sand bucket with the pale is an applique. And then the E and the N are just regular embroidery files, so there's no applique. But you see how well they coordinate together and they go together. I think they're super cute. All right, and this is, and also one good thing is that this has um, stitch simulator. So you can see from the beginning of the design how it will stitch out. Okay, hold on a second. All right, so there's a little marker bar and you can see, so this is the, placement stitch, the red, you would put your fabric down at this point. Black is the tack down stitch. And then this blue bar is the actual satin stitch. So I think this is cool that you can actually see what the machine will do in real time. So that's actually pretty, pretty dope. I like that feature a lot. All right. So now 
I'm actually going to do a new page and I'm going to show you the same thing, but using the BX font method of doing things. All right. So because these files came with a BX option. All right. So let's try that out. Okay. All right. So you see this option here that says this little folder that says BX Jared Alphabet. All right, here we go. So these files, at least on the Windows version, okay, and here's some instructions. This is actually really nice that the designer included instructions. I think that's super cool. Okay, so, but I'm gonna show you here. So you don't really, I guess you don't really need this. So what you're gonna do, ah, I think I just, Accidentally got out of that. All right, hold on a sec. All right, here we go. All okay, so I'm going to click on the BX alphabet. So all of these little files with the arrow in the needle means it's the BX font. So, and I discovered you can actually import all of them at the same time. So all you have to do to import them into the program is select all of them. So if you select one and then hit shift and then hit the last one, it'll select all of them. Or you can hit, um, you can hold down control and select each one individually. All you're going to do is select all of them, drag them from the folder just into this workspace here. And you'll see it says this font, Jared, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch has been installed. Okay. So now I'm going to do that for the other files. So let's go back and see. All right, let's go. All right. So now I need to do the applique alphabet. So we'll do this one. Oh, wait, sorry. I was not in the forgot I was not actually in the uh, the screen here. Okay, so we're gonna do the SandPal alphabet next. So you see they all, this one also has a BX option. So you just need to click on the folder that has the BX on it and then select all of the files. So this one comes with three different sizes for the four by four inch hoop, the five by seven and the six by 10. Again, drag from the folder into the workspace and it will automatically install your files here. Now we just have one more to do. We got to do the uh, embroidery font. Okay. So just click on the BX folder. So this one has one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. All right. Select all of them. Drag into the workspace. Oops. Okay. And now, so now all of them have been installed. So how you can tell if this works up in this little menu bar, there's you'll see the letter A, and that is for for uh, typing things out. So it's to create letters. So I'm going to click this, and you'll automatically get A B C. That's the default. So this little box here that says text is where you can customize that. So all right. So say I want to do the letter J. All right. Click Enter. Now you'll see it's in the default font though. So to change the font, you'll see the style here. Oh wait, sorry. You'll see this uh, little arrow that says block. So this is what all of my installed fonts. So I have quite a few. All right, so this is the Jared one that I you saw me import earlier. And you can select the font and the size. Let's see if we can find. Okay, so here's the Sand Pal alphabet. So I'm going to, so again, we're going to do the same thing. This is just a different process. So I'm going to do the uh, sand pal four by four inch hoop alphabet. So see, this is the same, the same design as my other workspace. We just used a different method. We used the BX font. This is a little bit easier because you don't have to you don't have to go into each individual PES file or whatever your format is and drag and drop each element. You can just type and then select 
whatever font you want. Okay, so now we've got this. All right, so I'm going to, all right, so let's do the same thing we did earlier. I'm just gonna rotate and move over here. So now I'm gonna do another text box, so a new one. All right, so you see it automatically did the sand pail one, but I'm gonna do the EN for Jen. So we're gonna do the same thing. But all you have to do, so you see, it just selected the different uh, texts. So now you see the surf side down below in the lower right hand corner, you can see the surf side font. So that's the same thing. So I'm gonna do surf side three inch and you see it automatically created the EN. So here we go. So now all we have to do is rotate this one as well. All right. And then let's see if we can kind of get these to align evenly. So I'm gonna select uh, both of these objects here. All right, let's see, utility. So this align distribute thing is pretty cool. All right, so let's do um, spacing. Let's, let's try that, I guess, okay. And did that work? Let's do space, okay, so we'll do spacing. Okay, cool. Okay, and this one actually, so with the first workspace we did, they're kind of all aligned around the center. Okay, so you can do different things. So you can have them be centered around the center line or like with this one, notice they're all aligned along the bottom here. I also actually kind of like the centered one better. All right, so let's try this again. Do utility, align and distribute. All right, so let's do do spacing and then so we'll do spacing for I guess the uh how far apart they are and then center for where they fall all right the other way okay so let's try that all right okay that did not all right I'm gonna try this let's do let's try to see what happens okay oh wait let's see all right, let's do center and then spacing. I think this will work or not. Okay, we're gonna try a few different things here. Okay, um, because I wanted them to be, I really wanted these things to be centered this way. Okay, or I guess you could just do that and then, all right, let's do, let's see what happens when we, all right, I'm trying to, all right, I'm trying to figure out the right setting for this align. Okay, here we go. So it's a line center. Okay, let's see if this works. And then distribute. Okay, let's do spacing. Let's see if this works. Okay, not quite. All right. We're going to we're going to get it right. Okay, let's do wonder if I have to do center. Okay. Okay, that actually did center that way. Okay. So that's what I wanted. Um I wanted it spaced out this way. So that's what I'm trying to figure out here. Let's see what happens. Okay, that did not work out. All right. Um. Okay, we're gonna try a few different things. Let's do, I'm not even sure what these two things are. So if anything though, what you can do is you can just select everything and then, okay, that did not. All right, well, that's weird. Okay. If anything, you can just sort of, you can always center it on the vertical line and then move everything this way. So I guess you could do that. Okay, hold on a second. So we're gonna center that. And that's the thing, you can kind of tweak it to how you think it looks best. All right, so we'll do that. Sure, why not? Okay, there we go. Let's just move this this way a little bit. So say I like the way this looks, right? Think that looks too bad all right and you, yeah you can really and that, that's what i like about the bx format is that you you just have to type everything out and you don't have to it's a little i feel like it's a little bit less work okay so say you were satisfied with this um i demonstrated this in another video but you can actually save all of the applique shapes you need and um turn them into an svg cut file so you can actually 
I cut out the applique pieces for the J and the sand pail with the shovel. You can actually save these as an SVG cut file. So we're going to go over that next. So you're like, okay, how do I do this? So what I do is click on the element with the applique and then go over to color. So you'll see you can select whatever the the placement stitch is and then you'll see it opens up the thread menu. Okay, so let me do that one more time. So all you have to do from here is click the tab that says applique and select applique position, right? And then you'll see there's a little cutting option. It says cutting, inflate, um, and then you can choose. Basically, this is how many millimeters outside the cut line or the positioning stitch you want the file to be. Now, in the past, I've done 1.5 millimeter, and in my opinion, that's not quite big enough because sometimes it can be a little bit tricky when you're placing the applique fabric down and you want to make sure that it um that it gets covered by the tack down stitch with which is the next stitch so i personally found that 1.5 millimeter is not enough so i think in the future i'm going to be doing anywhere from 2.5 to 3 millimeters now this does also require kind of a thicker satin stitch this one does have a thicker satin stitch. So I'm gonna do two, let's do like two point, I'll do three, we'll just do three. So all you have to do from here is hit save, and then you can save the J as an SVG cut file. So I'm gonna call this uh, J applique shape um, sand pail um, four by four. Ooh, because that's what the size is. Um, and then this will automatically save an SVG file. So that's all you have to do. I think that's a really cool feature. So then you can save this. Okay, here we go. And then you'll see in my folder here, now I've got an SVG cut file. So you can go into whatever program you use for your um, cutting if you've got the Silhouette Studio or Cricut Design Space and you can actually then load that up and cut out your applique shape. I did link a video below in the description box where I show that process uh, more thoroughly. So if you wanna check that out, you're welcome to. All right, we've got a good question. Can this be used with the scan and cut? I believe it's, so the scan and cut, I believe you can load up an SVG file, right? As long as you can do that, um, you should be able, it should be able to work. Um, cause SVG files do seem to be pretty standard. The only thing I would caution you to do is make sure you're not resizing the file when you get into whatever program you're using or on the machine. So as long as you cut out the file as is, so you don't change how big it is at all, it should work well for your, um, embroidery process. Uh, but yeah, I've noticed that when I've done... When I've done this at 1.5 millimeters, I just found that um, just with human error and everything, I was not able to place, I was a little stressed out because my app, when I was placing my applique shape over the placement stitch, the tact is sometimes it wasn't, I wasn't positioning it exactly how it should be. So the tack down stitch wasn't getting it. And then I might have some gaps in my applique which is not something you want. So in the future, I think I'm going to be going with three millimeter for is for um, just making it a little bit larger, just so that I can make sure the tack down stitch gets it. So I think that's a really cool thing that you can do with the Embrilliant software um, that makes your life a little bit easier. So you don't have to place your fabric down and then use tiny scissors to cut around the shapes. I think that can be really helpful. So if you guys have any questions, I know we've gone over quite a bit of stuff. Um, I did see someone saying they thought I was going too fast. Um, you can always rewind this and watch it again. Another feature about YouTube that I like is 
that you can actually uh, play back things at a slower speed. So if I'm, you feel I'm talking too fast, which I do, uh, play it back at 0.75. Or if you feel like someone's talking too slow, you can play it back at 1.5 speed or 2 2x speed. So you can do that as well. Um, so I just wanted to go over some of the things about the software because, I again, that's something I get a lot of questions about. I'm going to just get some coffee real quick. But let's uh, let's check out the comments. Thank you all for everyone who's who's watching. And I know a lot of people are going to be watching on the replay since um, this is a pretty specific topic. And I know not everyone has an embroidery machine or embroidery software. So I, I completely understand. Uh, but if you have any questions about what I just did, let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this later. But I just wanted to go over and I got to figure out some things with the software I have not gotten to play with it as much as I want to but this is why I thought this would just be a fun thing kind of casual just to uh, just just to go over this and just kind of do this in real time from purchasing the design to downloading the files because uh, I know not everyone is super tech savvy I also have my USB flash drive so I will be showing you guys how I transfer this uh, to the the machine so that's a question I get a lot too, is how do you get the design um, from the machine or from the computer to the machine? And you need some sort of USB flash drive or thumb drive or whatever. So there is a thumb drive. There is a USB slot on the machine and I'm gonna be showing that to you in a second. All right, so let's, let's roll this video. So this is the Brother P800. This is the machine I have. Oh, excuse me. You can see it does have quite a few features on it. All right, and to the right is where the USB slot is. So that's me taking the USB drive from the computer and putting it into the USB port. It's it's pretty simple, honestly. Um, all you have to do. All right, so I'll show you. All right, let's let's show you what I I'll show you what I do. All right, so let's pull this back up. So this, let's see here. So this is the file I saved with the gen right now, right? And I am going to be stitching out this design in a future video. So I just thought this would be a good prep for it. So I'm going to take my USB drive and I'm going to plug that into my computer. All right, so I'm going to show you. All right, sorry about that. I accidentally, I thought I was unplugging something else. I accidentally unplugged uh, my own microphone. So that's fantastic, right? So hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if you can't hear me because that would be uh, bad. So, all right, so I'm gonna unplug something else now. All right, so your computer or your laptop or whatever you're using should have a USB slot that you can plug your USB flash drive into. People also call it a thumb drive. So I'm just going to plug this in, let's see here, there we go, All right. okay, okay, so you can see my computer automatically recognized uh, my USB drive. Okay, so this is all, the, these are all the files I have on the USB drive, right? So this is where I keep a ton of different stuff. So all I have to do, and this is pretty, not too bad, is I have to, whatever you want to put on your embroidery machine, just take that file, drag it into your USB drive folder that opens up. Okay, so I'm doing that now. So you can see it transferring over. All right. So you can see now it is on this drive, okay? All right, here we go. So 
here it goes. And um, I did, I think I got a question. I forgot if it was on one of the videos or something, but somebody said they were having trouble that their um, embroidery machine was not recognizing their USB flash drive. I'm not exactly sure why that would be. Uh, one recommendation I have is if you are having issues with it, I would um, reformat your USB flash drive. There's got, I think there's probably a way to do it, um, but you may want to, you know, like if you're using your USB drive for like other things, I'm wondering if that might be a problem. Let me see if there's, I'm sure there's got to be, okay, so you can format it, okay. I don't know if I want to do that right now. Okay, so you can, rest okay, so you can restore your device. So you may, so if you right click on whatever drive it is on your computer, at least this is with Windows format, this should sort of like clear, it kind of clears out the card. So if you have other types of files, I wonder if maybe that's contributing to the issue, but you may want to reformat your entire card um, or like, and make sure it's not anything you have important files on, just like a junk one or whatever. And they're very cheap. So I might try to reformat the drive. Uh, the other thing I do is when I am about to pull out the flash drive from my computer, I will um, sometimes you can have an issue if you just, so if you just pull out the USB flash drive from your computer without doing this, you may have some issues. So down, you can see down below, there is like show hidden icons and you see this little, I, I know this is like tiny. Um, there's like a little, I don't know what you would call this. It kind of looks like a some sort of disc. If you hover over it, it says safely remove hardware and eject media. I do this every time I remove the flash drive, just because I guess this helps protect the contents. So um, this is USB I. So it says eject USB disk. Uh, and my husband just told me to do this. So I, you know, I was like, okay. So this will make sure that none of your, like, I guess it keeps your files intact or something like that. So I will do this whenever I'm removing the drive and then I would remove it from the computer and then insert it into the embroidery machine. So that's all you have to do with that. And I'll show you guys just, just one more time. Let's, let's roll this video and showing me taking out of the, and I, again, I can't show this in real time cause I don't have the camera angles for it, but that's why I have the pre pre played video so that you guys can see what you have to do. So just remove it from your computer and put it into the inverter machine. And then also you tip, yeah, you typically want to make sure your machine is off when you do this. So that's all you do. Um, and then I do have some other videos where I show more about um, working with the machine itself and then just going into the, uh, the like uh, user interface on that machine. But I just wanted to do more stuff with the software in this video because that's a question I get a lot. So I thought that would be a, a fun thing to do. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful though, because I know it can be a little bit confusing with the software. I think so far I like the Embrilliance Essentials. I'm glad I upgraded. It is about $150. The company often has sales though. So I think I got my copy for about 140. They were having some type of sale. And so far I like it. It's pretty easy to use. But again, um, keep in mind, I'm not doing digitizing. So this is, I, I would recommend this software for someone who is going to be working with already produced designs. So I, I believe Embrilliance does have a digitizing level of software. And that is one thing I like about the company is that you don't have to, it's not just all or nothing. You can buy in at different levels. They have different packages. And then if you feel like you're ready to start digitizing, you can upgrade to their digitizer type uh, stuff. So there's a lot of different um, things you can do with the brilliance. But again, different people have different needs. Like I'm just manipulating designs I already purchased. I'm not trying to digitize pictures or anything. And I'm also not going to be designing my own embroidery designs. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. So 
I'm just doing like basic, basic stuff here. So if you are, I, and again, um, oh, there is a channel um, I would recommend. And this is actually the person I was trying to get to, uh, I, I did reach out to this individual to see if they wanted to come on and talk about digitizing with me. But I will also get, hold on a second, I'm going to give them a shout out. I'm going to give them a shout out to their channel because I checked out their channel and they really do seem to know what they're talking about in terms of uh, the embroidery digitizing. And I like their content. They don't have a lot of subscribers yet. Um, but let me just uh, pull this up real quick. Let's see here. So the channel is called, uh, it's this guy, Eric Campbell. And he is like a legit digitizing expert. Like, and, and they work for the company that makes Embrilliance. So he has a lot of really uh, good. Now, here's the thing, though, with his channel, I've noticed is that. All right, what's going on? Is that. um. He does like podcast type episodes, so they are kind of topical, but I do find that some of his content can be a little like hard to see would, you know, like, like it's not just a video about like basics of digitizing. It's just like, there's all these podcast episodes. So I do think the content is, it's a little bit confusing because it says like the take up episode 99 or whatever. Um, but I would... I watched some of the videos. He's well spoken, and I think this seems like a good channel for anyone who wants to learn more about digitizing. He also seems to have a lot of a ton of experience, way more experience than me in the embroidery industry. So I think this is a good resource. And I just want I'll I'll in the comments below after after I'm done with the live stream, I'll link his channel. I think it's he's got a lot of really good resources. And I did email him and I asked if uh he wanted to come on and try to chat just about like super basic stuff. Uh, so if I hear back from him or if Eric, you happen to see this, uh, re reach out to me or check your email because I'd love to have you on just to answer some like very basic questions. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, I again, I may or may not be able to answer them. And I really try to be uh, transparent about the fact that um, I like embroidery. But I would also not, I would definitely not try to mislead you because I'm not some sort of expert. I'm just someone who likes doing it. I have the machine, um, you know, so hopefully this is helpful to people who are like me who are kind of just getting in into it. But if you have any questions, uh, let me know. We'll hang out for a little bit. Man, it's been quite a, it's been quite a week here. Um, and I, I, I just got this shirt. I feel like a yellow highlighter, but, uh. J. Crew was having a J. Crew factory was having a really bonker sale, so I decided to get myself some stuff. And uh, you know, I'm I, I live in t-shirts, so I will wear the same t-shirts until they're like falling apart. So I thought, hey, maybe I should upgrade some, you know, just restock some of my t-shirts, and you know, see if I get. But I always try to get good deals. And yeah, J. Crew was having a an amazing. You know, they were having like a thing like it was like 70% of all off all clearance items. So I was like, hey, that's cool. And um, T-shirts are something, though, that I've made before. I I don't know. I don't really feel like they're worth making just because they are so inexpensive. Um, and I can never when I've tried to make T-shirts myself, like using the serger, I can never get them to be as uh, as good quality wise as the ones you can buy. So I, you know, if I'm going to be making something, I like to try to sew things that I can't buy easily. So that's always a fun time, but you know, things like underwear and t-shirts, I've just find, I, I can't make underwear and t-shirts myself that are as good as the ones you can buy. And it's definitely not more cost effective for sure. All right. We got some more comments. Uh, uh, Diane, you just got a brother in Ovis and NQ 1700E. Why do all the brother machines too have like real? Some of the models have really long names and like numbers. They could be a little bit. They can be a little bit hard to hard to remember. All right. Uh, can you remind me what the thing is called that gives the pick of the embroidery files on the computer? Are you talking about like the 
preview? Or are you talking about the, um, like the cut files? Uh, clarify and I'll, I'll try to try to help you out here. All right. Star says, I have a Husqvarna Viking embroidery machine, sewing machine, at least 20 years old. It still works. Wow. Would like to get a baby lock alliance. That sounds like fun. You know, I really like baby lock machines. They're pretty pricey, but I did use a really nice one once at a sewing workshop and it was so comfortable to sew on. I really do like the baby lock um, machines and, and they tend to have really good features. They're just a little bit out of my price range. So that's why I haven't tried to try to do that. And also guys, help me out here. I'm getting close to 100,000 subscribers. Help me out if you're watching and you're not subscribed. I would really appreciate it, especially if you enjoy these videos and you want to help a sister out. But I would like to try to get to 100,000 definitely by this year. Uh, things have been kind of slow going on YouTube in terms of the views. So if you're if you're watching, uh, let me know. All right. RMF. Did you have to do anything special or different to compensate for the thickness of the bath mat? You know, I did. I think I had that. I there's a whole video I did on it. So if you want to watch me doing it, I think I had the tension set pretty low. And then um, because it had like a nubby top to it, I used a water soluble topper so that the stitches like wouldn't get lost in all of that pile. So if ever I'm working with anything that has like texture to it, I will always put a sheet of water soluble topper over it. And I floated the bath, bath mat over the hoop because there was no way I would ever get it inside the hoop. Um, one thing is I've noticed there are some magnetic hoops now that you can get for that are compatible with the brother machines though. I've been curious about them, but they're really expensive and the reviews on them were not very good. So I, like if I'm buying stuff to test out, I like, I'm a little bit wary about the product if it does not have very good ratings. And those those items I've been seeing, um, the ratings have just been pretty lackluster. And if I'm going to spend like $150 on hoops, which seems like a lot of money, then I'm going to be, uh, yeah, that I'm a little bit wary about that because, you know, I mean, you know, I, I use my own money for this stuff. And if the product sucks, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to buy it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it is what it is. All right, here we go. Oh, the preview pick. Okay. So those are usually, all right, let me see if I can roll up on that. Hold on a sec. So typically when there's like a preview picture, okay, so let me just share this again. All right. So I've got one of these. So usually there's going to be a folder in, um, w in your files that says images. So this is the images. So you can see here, and this is nice. And most designs will come with something like this. So you can see what it looks like. So, and you can also see like what, like the order of the threads. And I've noticed this designer makes the uh, placement stitch red and then the tack down stitch black. So I guess you can, you know, and again, you don't have to use those colors. Those are just the colors they used for the uh, the design. So you can now see what they all look like. And this is cool. It's got upper and lower case. I think these, um, and again, I, I can't attest to the quality of these stitch outs because I haven't tried these, these designs, but I did really like the design. So I thought I would uh, give it a shot. I've tried a lot of different designers and Etsy has been a really good place to get designs. Um, a while back, there was a, there was a designer, there was a shop called Magic Hoop. I think their store got shut down or that seems to be a thing with Etsy. I'm seeing a lot of stores getting shut down for various reasons. Um, and also Etsy is not permitted to operate in some countries. So I'm thinking maybe that was the issue. But uh, so here's the images. Um, and typically with the files though, because Windows doesn't recognize. So like with the files, you'll see them in the preview here. But like, like say the PS, there's no preview because Windows is like, what the, what the heck is this file? So 
that's kind of what that typically is. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, I did just want to kind of just play around. Yeah, and I haven't even, this software, there's so many different things it can do. I haven't even, honestly, I haven't even figured out everything. Let's see here. I'm just trying to figure out, I know there's got a way to, there's got to be a way to like, I figured maybe to like switch the orientation of how you're seeing the hoop. Um, and I know there's a way to change. Let me see if I can figure it out. I know there's a way to change the um, the hoop size for this. Let me see if I can. All right, view. Sorry, I think my stomach's growling because um, I am a little bit I'm a little bit hungry here. All right, let's see. I know there's got to be a way. And oh, and also this little zoomy thing here, you can make it really big or really like small. I like that they have like a ruler here. But yeah, let me see if I can. All right. Under... I know there's a way to change the hoop size. I think I've done it before. All right, where are we going here? All right, let's see. Let's just explore this. Okay. Paste, undo. Measure on screen. Okay, I don't know what that's doing. Merge design, merge stitch file. Project, yeah, this thing, okay, the remove his hidden stitches, I've done that before, that's pretty. Oh wait, here we go, flip core. Okay, it's already flipped horizontally. Okay. All right. Uh, oh wait, here we go, inches. Yeah, this, I mean, yeah, there's a lot about this software I haven't even, to be quite frank, I have not even figured out yet. So. But yeah, I know there's a way to change. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's try the help window. All right, let's see how helpful. All right, let's see how helpful this is. All right, let's do, um, hoop size. Okay. You could choose in the, oh, in the preference window. Where's the preference window? Under environment. Yeah, I'm not even sure where, where's preferences? Oh, is it here? Okay, oh, maybe it's here. All right, let's try this out. Oh, here we go, oh, here we go. All right, this is a whole new avenue here. All right. We've got the hoops here. All right, oh, so you can choose the format? All right. Here's the hoops. Yeah, I wish this was in, there's gotta be a way to change this to inches, right? I don't know. Cause this is, honestly, who uses, who uses millimeters? I really wanna know. Okay, so here's, okay, so it kinda gives the general hoop size. Okay, this is cool. This is 12 by four. All right, let's try to find five by seven. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. So five by seven, all right, here we go. All right, so, okay, so now we know under preferences, let's see what happens if you change this to like, let's see what happens if you change it to the four by four. We're just gonna try that. Okay, so this is the four by four. Okay, so see, okay, so now we can change the hoop size. I knew there was a way to do it. I just kind of forgot. Okay, so let's go back to the, all right, so this is the five, let's go back to the five by seven inch hoop. Okay, let's see what else is under preferences. Display settings, okay. Graphics scale, metric. All right, well, why not? Mouse wheel, adjust, zoom, scroll. Okay, so you can change what your mouse does. Ghost mode, don't know what that is. Automatically saves documents. All right, removes overlap. Removes over, actually that would be cool. Okay, so removes overlaps, maybe. Oh, so you can you can have that be auto, that's cool. Okay, um, format.pes, okay. Stitch format, this is cool. All right, printing, oh, and you, I believe you can print templates too with this. 
Not exactly. I'll have to, we'll have to test that out. Again, I'm still, I'm still kind of new to the software. So, uh, you're, again, I'm not, I don't know if I'm any more, more knowledgeable about it than you. All right. So to turn the hoop, put a check in the rotate. Okay. Put a check in the rotate box. Okay. So what, where's that one? All right, let's go back here. Okay. Oh, here we go. Ro oh, okay. Let's try that. Here we go. All right. So now I can. All right. So let's. All right. So this is cool. All right. So let's try to. All right. So, all right. Yeah, this, you can see this. So you can see this looks, you can see this way better now. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you for that. All right, cool. So now we know you can rotate the whole box so you could see that so that is pretty sweet so now you can see how yeah this looks way better to be honest with you okay cool thank you very very much nina nina Salter. shout out to nina awesome yeah there's so much stuff you can do with this i'm still okay so now we can make this a little bit bigger let's see here what's going on here Something happened with my, uh, all right, what's going on? All right. There we go. All right, now I can't move. That's the weird thing. Now I can't move this, though. Let me see what happens when you, all right, let's see what happens when I undo this. Okay. No. Wait, what did I just do? Oh, wait, here we go. All right. Let's try this again. Okay. So you can still zoom in and out. And yeah, if you get really close, look at you can see all of the individual stitches. And I think you can actually make the stitches a little bit denser. If you go to stitch, you can um, change the density and fill a little bit. I don't know how much. Honestly, I probably wouldn't play with this too much because at a certain point, you would like distort the design. All right, so remove hidden stitches. That's cool. That's kind of nice too, because then you get less bulk in your overall design. So very, very cool. All right. So this has been really fun and I learned some stuff from you guys too. All right, let's see here. There's something that in Brilliant sells that gives a preview pick of all your embroidery files. You know what? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Somebody else mentioned that too. I'm honestly too cheap to buy that. I think it was like $50. Let's, you know what? Let's go to the website. You're right though. There is something you can get so you can see everything. Um, from what I remembered, it was kind of expensive. So that's why I did not, uh, that's why I didn't do it. Let's see here. Let me see if I can find that. All right, we'll, we'll bring up the website. see here. Sorry, I got itch on my nose. Yeah. Hello. I know I haven't really been on screen too much for this whole live stream. Okay, so, oh wait, here it is. It's called, sorry, my mouse is going like a little crazy here. All right, so this is the Embrilliance website. All right, this is called the, the thumbnailer. Oh, it's on sale. There we go. So in Brilliant Thumbnailer replaces your embroidery file icons with graphical previews. It's $40. So I guess you have to think to yourself, is this something, you know, I mean, yeah. Is it really worth, like I generally kind of know what the files are. And the good thing is too, is that again, a lot of my designs came with um, like the preview images. So I can kind of see what, like, I mean, if it says the letter A, you you know what the letter A looks like. So I guess it depends on if that's something you feel is worth the money. Yeah, for even on sale, forty dollars. I don't. I don't know. I mean, that is nice. Okay, and I think most of the software is for Mac. I think it's good for Mac and Windows. I mean, I I'm thinking if you have an embroidery business, might be worthwhile. If you don't really care or like you don't 
mind about taking the extra two seconds to drag it into a brilliance to see what it is, then, you know, yeah, I don't know. What's free, ut or let's see what free utilities is. Okay, so they've got, oh, yeah, I don't even know what this is. Okay. Okay, so this is the free version of Embrilliance. Okay. And yeah, the Embrilliance Express free version, it's very limited. Like, if you're just doing BX fonts and you're spelling out words or names or something, you might not need the paid version. If you are, like, if you're starting to merge designs, you can't save your files in the free version. So that's something to know. And I had the free version for a long time and I wasn't even sure if I was going to upgrade. But finally, I decided to upgrade because I, I did want to, you know, what's Air? I don't even know what Air Stitch for Air iPad is. All right. It's an iPad app that lets you download, view, convert, email, air print and send to Dropbox and braid designs on your iPad. Yeah, I I don't really use my iPad with embroidery stuff, so. That's cool, I guess. I know, I mean, I guess it's good. It's free. Yeah, I don't know if that's something I would particularly use. But, you know, I don't know. So, I guess that's that's an option if you want it. Okay. Let's go back here. But we'll take a look at the different levels. Merle. Okay, patch making software. That's kind of interesting. Is that new? I don't even know if that's... I don't think that's new but they uh, they are having a sale so if you if you've been waiting to jump on this i guess maybe although they're having they have a lot of sales so if if you don't catch this sale i i have no doubt there's going to be another one but their website is pretty uh good they have a youtube channel with tutorials as well i've been doing these videos so hopefully you can find the information you're looking for but I've been kind of able to figure things out just by, like, playing around with it. Let's see, the enthusiast. Okay, so this has stitch file editing, composition automated, knockdown stitching, custom hoops. And I haven't done a lot of multi-hoop designs. I feel like I would screw it up, so that's why I haven't really tried uh, doing that, to be frank with you. There's a lot of stuff where I'm like, yeah, I don't know what this would be. I feel like if I tried to do, like, one of those things with this where I split it into different hoopings, I think it would come out terrible. So that's why I personally haven't been doing a lot of uh, a lot of that type of thing. But if you do let let me know, um, I'd be curious to see what your um, tips are. So okay, thank you very much, Kay. And yes, if you're not aware, um, I've had this policy here at the sewing report, I don't do, I generally don't do sponsored videos to begin with. Um, I've had a lot of sketchy offers and I don't, I don't take them because they sound really weird. And I, I've decided not to do any product, any, I don't do paid product reviews or paid features. So if you're a company out there, I do not do those videos where you send me a product and I'll feature it in a video or you send me a product and I do a review on it just because I want to make sure that, that my reviews are completely unbiased and I do think if you're getting something for free, it, I do think it's going to be kind of difficult for you to be able to give a 100% honest assessment of it, especially if it's a pricier item. So I've chosen to purchase the things I use in videos. Um, I do offset some, you know, obviously I not doing like a lot of brand deals or sponsorships does make a difference financially. So that's why I have the um, Etsy shop. So I'll pull that up as well. Um, there's some links below. Um, I really appreciate all, all the support you guys have given me though. And uh, I really want to try to keep the sewing report a, um, a I, I want to try to keep the pay to play stuff away from this channel. Um, I don't really like doing sponsored content. I don't particularly like watching sponsored videos myself. So I really try to do everything I can to make sure that um, all the videos you're seeing and the content you're seeing uh, does not have a, a business relationship. I am an Amazon affiliate. That's right now about it. I'm in a few different other affiliate programs, but I really try to keep, you know, I really just try to not participate in a lot of that stuff. And I also have a policy. Um, that's laid out in my about section on my website that 
Um, people are welcome to send me stuff to try out, but it's under no obligation. So I don't do any sort of like tit for tat arrangements or, hey, if you send me this, I'll do a video on it. If you send stuff to me, it's at your own risk. I do not guarantee anybody anything. And again, I've had a lot of companies be like, hey, can we send you this? And you do a video on it. And I always say, you're welcome to send stuff to this address, but I cannot guarantee, um, I'm sorry, my necklace is coming up. I don't guarantee or um, make any promises. So if I like the item, you know, yeah, sure, I'll talk about it. If I don't like it, then I probably won't talk about it. And that also frees me up too that I don't have to worry about pleasing sponsors or people that send stuff just to stay on the good side. And I, I, and I can say whatever I want about whatever. Um, and that is a thing I've had, I've seen contracts where, um, a brand will try to do a deal with you and they'll want exclusivity. So that means you don't talk about any other products or feature any other products in that category. Um, there's also like disparagement clauses. So a lot of influencers who sign contracts, there's a clause that says you cannot speak negatively about the company. So if you think that's going to affect their content, you would probably be right. So I totally get that some channels and influencers do do sponsorships. I think that's up to them. Um, you know, no judgment here. Uh, it's just I just have chosen myself not to really not to really do that type of thing because I, I just didn't I just don't enjoy it. And I don't really like having I just don't like having to worry about answering to some company or brand. So this I do have an Etsy shop if you uh would like to support me in that way where I sell sewing supplies. I have some fabric there and um, I want to do another kit at some point because th those are fun to do. I do still have the 2021 holiday sewing kits and I did get in another shipment of the uh, peppermint fabric, which is a really cute Christmas fabric. And I've got some new items that I have the, the, um, supplies but I haven't listed them in the Etsy shop so I do have quite a few things that I feature in the videos um like my marking pens my erasable marking pens which I love um my applique my um curved scissors that I use a lot with the embroidery machine um pins I use magic pins quite a bit and I've started using them with um the embroidery machine because they're great for holding the water soluble topper in place without pins. Using pins at the embroidery machine can be kind of a pain in the butt. So if you'd like to peruse the Sewing Report Etsy shop, there is a link in the description box. I uh, greatly appreciate all of the um, viewers though that come by, all the uh, support. And I, I think this, the Etsy shop has been a great way to connect to people. I do plan to do a video in the near future about the, uh, the economic factors of the Etsy shop because uh, I, I know, I feel like at this point, the Etsy world, it's, you know, this is like the new um, get rich quick thing going around on, you know, online. Like, hey, you could make six figures with an Etsy shop, that sort of thing. And uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions with that. Um, my own personal experience with the Etsy is, has been that is, it is not an easy way to make money. So I will be doing an update on my own Etsy shop, the financials and going over uh, whether I made any money with it. I have to look at my my um, finance. I have to look at my QuickBooks to see what what all went on. But I'm going to I'm going to share with you what you know, what my what that branch has done in the last year and a half. Um, spoiler alert, it's about broken even. So I would not say it's like. It's not an easy way to make money. And keep in mind that I started an Etsy shop when I had over 50,000 YouTube subscribers. So I already had a fairly large outlet of getting the word out. And it was pretty, the traffic has been pretty sporadic. So, you know, it's gotten better over time. And I have noticed a lot of similarities with, with Etsy that I can directly compare to YouTube and say, yeah, this was pretty similar with YouTube as far as gaining traction on the platform. So thank you very much, Lynn, for purchase. I, I do think I remember you. I, I remember. And I ship out all the packages out myself. So 
I'm, you know, I don't hire anybody to help me. So normally what happens is I, at this point, I usually get about one Etsy order every couple of days. Sometimes I get a few a day, uh, but it probably averages out to be about once a day. So it's pretty manageable. So I just, you know, pack up the order at the end of the night and then put it in the mailbox. So it's been pretty manageable so far, you know, but it's been, I'm glad I did it because it was a good learning experience, but um, I think all of those videos in blog posts you see about making money quickly and easily with Etsy, I think are pretty misleading because that has not been my experience at all. Uh, plus, as I've mentioned in some other videos with uh, accountants, now the IRS is going to know about your um, your uh, Etsy earnings at a much lower threshold than before. So you're going to have to pay taxes on all of your Etsy earnings if you make over $600 a year. So that is really great. But thank you guys for sticking with me. I know it's all, wow, we've been live for like an hour and a half. Um, if you have anything fun you want to share too, what, what are you working on craft-wise? Um, Oh, oh, let me show you. I do want to show you guys something because I'm really excited about this has been a project I've been wanting to do for a really long time. Let me bring up this listing. OK, I've been. I have been really interested in doing this for like a long, a long time. Um, so let me get this. All right, hold on a second. Sorry. And sorry if the desk has been like kind of shake. Sorry if the my sh I don't know. Um, sometimes my desk gets a little, you know, if I tap it or something, it'll start shaking. So I got this, uh, PDF sewing pattern and I'm excited to make this. So if you, if you're not aware, I'm a Korean American and I was born in Seoul, South Korea. And I've recently, more recent. I've been getting into K-dramas, which are Korean dramas. There's a lot of really great ones on Netflix. And uh, I purchased this pattern to make a like a traditional Korean top called the, the Hanbok. And I, I really want to make this pattern. So that's something I'm, I'm going to be doing this year, hopefully, hopefully soon. And I this is one of the only patterns I could find online. Um, and I'm really excited because at first, until recently, this pattern only had Korean instructions. And then I noticed like fairly, very recently, they offered a, an English version. Um, so I'm excited to make this top. I think it looks super cute and I wanna make it in some really fun fabrics, um, but I'm excited to do this. I don't know if, so it's a dress and the top. And if you've if you've ever seen Korean hanbok, it's a it's like a historic Korean style of dre dressing, and it has a lot of different pieces. This is kind of a simplified version, so there's a dress and the top. I think I'm gonna start off just with the top, um, but it's really this looks really fun, and I think this is a really wearable piece of clothing. And I've seen hanbok; you can buy them, but I just. I haven't really liked a lot of the fabric, so I'm, you know, I'm happy I can try to make my own, um, but I've been really trying to figure out. And it doesn't even look, I think once I make the first one, I think making subsequent versions wouldn't be too difficult once you figure out the the first one. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make a, um, uh, like a, I'm, I'm going to make like a test version just to make sure it fits well. And then hopefully um, I, I want to make I want to make a couple of them in some really cute fabrics. So that is on the horizon here at the sewing report. Um, let me know, too, if there was anything you want to see me doing in terms of projects or videos, because um, I think that'll be I think I think we're going to have we're going to have some fun this year. But guys, help me out if you have not subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? Please, uh, you know, do a sister a favor. And uh, hit the like button if you haven't already. And if you would all like sewing and crafts projects, I would love for you to join me by subscribing. I try to post. I know it's been a little bit um, sparse the last month because I, I went to the BTS concert. So that that actually took more. planning for that and just traveling and everything. And then I edited a vlog for it. Took a little more time than I thought. So, But I do, upload, I do try to upload at least once a week or do something 
but um, I'm getting close to 100,000 subscribers. It's been a long six years, guys, and I'd love to be able to finally get the uh, the silver play button and and be able to be in the 100,000 club. So uh, help me get there. Share this channel with your friends and your family members or anybody that you know that would enjoy learning about sewing or is just interested in maybe, you know, even if you don't sew, sometimes I like to watch videos about stuff I have no experience in. Uh, but let, we'll we'll read a few more comments. Okay, let's see here. All right, I heard that Etsy really changed their financial structure this year and it negatively impacts sellers. That, yeah, they raised the fees. So the fees used to be 5%. Uh, and that, there's also other types of fees. There's a listing fee, uh, trans, you know, the payment processing fee. The transaction fee was 5% and it's now 6.5%. So that a lot of people uh, were not super excited about that. And the thing that gets me about Etsy is that they claim that they're going to use that to invest more in the platform and offer more seller support, which was something that a lot of sellers were very dissatisfied by, myself included. And I haven't really seen that come into fruition. And from what I understand that happened the last time they raised the fees, as I said, they were going to invest more money into the infrastructure and uh, a lot of people felt like that did not happen. The other thing that I talked about in my, I did a video about the transaction fee increase is that um, they said they were going to invest like millions of dollars in marketing. And I feel like that's, I'm like, really? Everybody know, like, let's be real. People already know about Etsy. Do they really need a commercial to tell them about it? And is that really going to convince people to buy an Etsy if they don't already? But I, I think the, Brand recognition is pretty saturated, so I don't really feel like they need the marketing. And I also have noticed that Etsy has been paying influencers to do sponsored posts about Etsy. Like I saw a celebrity do a sponsored post about Etsy, and I'm like, what are they paying these influencers to to just promote the Etsy name? People, again, people already know about Etsy, and if they're gonna spend money, I think it should be in resources to help the sellers. Or, or if they're not going to spend the money wisely, why raise the fees at all? That's that's where I'm coming from here. So, yeah, I don't know. All right, here we go. Let's do a sew along for the Korean top. Yeah, I, I'm going to be doing a, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing in terms of the video for that. I, I've downloaded, I've got the pattern. I need, I, and I've been trying to study the instructions so I know what I'm doing. So I, you know, I don't know, but I, I'm really excited about that one because I think it'll be, I think it'll be super fun. So that will be, that'll be awesome. And I'm really looking forward to, um, trying to, trying to just get in, get in touch with that part of myself. Cause I haven't really been able to, you know, obviously I do watch, I do watch a lot of stuff. Okay. So Kay says, sounds cheaper to just create your own website. My site is less than $20 a month. I think depending on your sales volume, it does make sense to have your own website. Uh, I think the thing that Etsy does offer is the traffic because people like, so you already get, so it's kind of like being in a more populated place for a physical business. I think if you have your own marketing channels, then that does make sense. I decided to do Etsy more for the convenience factor myself. And um, the other thing I do like about the platform is that they take care of all the sales tax for you. So you don't have to worry about remitting sales tax to different states or trying to figure that out. So I thought that would be kind of um, time consuming. And the Etsy shop already is kind of time consuming as far as keeping the books go. So I, you know, I, I can, there's definitely some pros and cons to having your own website. I think it's good to have your own, like if you're doing a high volume, especially, a lot of people are doing a website and Etsy. And then maybe once their own website sales eclipse Etsy, then I guess you don't really have to worry um, too much about it. Uh, but I think I'm gonna sign off pretty soon. I am I gotta eat something at some point. But thank you guys for joining me here at the Sewing Report. Again, hit the like button if you enjoyed this little walkthrough uh, with Brilliance Essentials. And uh, drop me a comment if you haven't already. Uh, but I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and I'll see you next week because we are going to be um, getting more into the Juki industrial sewing machine because 
I have figured out how to add a walking foot and I'm really excited about that. So I'll catch you guys later. And uh, remember, whatever you're doing, make sure it's fun.